NDC running mate Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman has vowed the next NDC administration will prosecute corrupt government officials. She made the promise at her abdoring last night at the University of Professional Studies, Accra. She also took a swipe at government over what she believes is mismanagement of the economy. My colleague James Saveji has more. <laughs> Draped in the symbolic red, white, green, and black colors of the umbrella, hundreds of NDC sympathizers and party bigwigs gather here at the UPSC Auditorium in Accra to witness the outdooring of Professor Jenana Opokwajima as running mate to John Dramani Mahama. Professor Jane Nana Opoku Ajimai. Chairman of the party, Johnson Asedu Nketja, set the tone for the night by bursting the bubbles of those anxiously waiting for appointment in the next NDC government. Some people are not only fighting about the positions they will occupy. They are telling all others that they will be the key makers and they will be making their appointment. If we are not careful... This will dampen the enthusiasm and the spirit of our followers. Rolling out her vision to party faithfuls and Ghanaians, Professor Jane Nana Opokwa Jeman did not shy away from taking a swipe at government. I don't know about you, but the image I get looking at that hole is a trench in utter shock that anyone could believe. It was intended as a thanksgiving gift to the almighty, invisible, God only wise. Such a report will not find COVID money shared for partisan political campaign purposes. I will not, in the advancement of self serving ambition, declare to the whole world that I was only the driver's mate. So what will her government offer Ghanaians? The, the report will highlight new roads, harbors, railway lines, not what we've seen of late, Ayalolo buses. You will find the lack of intimidation of opposing voices. You will find serious investment and practice to, to enable a digitized economy and society. The report will go on to point at housing projects, including the famous Saglemi housing complex. And even those that somebody has happily raised to make room for a presumed... Knowing the role Vice President Dr. Mabun Baumia is playing as head of the economic management team, and lead on government digitization agenda and what may be expected of the next vice president, former president John Dramani Mahama explains what the exact job description of his vice president will be. She has great insights into human resource management, empowerment and social development. And under my administration, she will have oversight among others of the education sector, the health sector, gender and social protection. <laughs> Professor Jinnana Opokwa Jiman says the next NDC administration would deal with all corrupt government officials. John and I have agreed that whoever has participated in the plunder of the state must be held accountable. And my friends, this is not a threat. It is a promise. As to whether this second John and Jane ticket will deliver victory for the NDC camp December 7, 2024, the race has just begun. James Savage, join us. Well, I've been joined by Dr. Kwame Asasante, his senior political science lecturer at the Department of Political Science at the University of Ghana for a conversation. I'm grateful for your time, Doc. Uh, let me first gauge your appreciation of Professor Nana Jinopokwajiman's delivery yesterday. Hello, Doc. Kindly unmute for me. Good morning to you, Aisha. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Doc. 
Right. I think uh, yesterday what we witnessed uh, was nothing but a true reflection of what um, somebody who intends to be a leader, and specifically we are talking about Rani Bait, has to be. You are bold, you are fearless, and then you are aware of the problems of the society and you are ready uh, to fix them when opportunity comes your way. And that is exactly what we saw. Mm. There's much talk about how the professor's partnership will increase the NDC's fortunes, especially in the central region. What are your thoughts on this? Is it automatic? Yeah, sometimes, and I've been following media conversation about what he brought to uh, the ticket the last time and what is it uh, going to be this time around. That conversation about what he brought to the ticket, I don't know where it's coming from because... I am ready to see any research that people have done that is able to disaggregate the votes that uh, parties obtained in the last election. For you to know that this one, it was Nana who brought it. This one, it was John Mahama. These are other fact. Uh, this relate to other factors and all that. All that I'm saying is that there are various factors that influence voter choices. One is the economy, infrastructure development. Uh, the fight against corruption, rule of law, unemployment, and a host of them, in addition to what? Energy and energy crisis, how you are going to fix this. So, of course, I am not oblivious of the fact that the personality of what the president or the running mate or the flag bearer is also critical. Some people look at these things. But beyond that, people look at even constituency-specific issues. If there's a place where they are looking for market, uh, for women to what, uh, apply their vocation, and they don't find that. They don't care who about who is the running mate or the leader of the party. So that argument that what did she bring the last time <laughs> for me is a WAP argument. Uh, the whole, uh, you know, um, analysis is wrong. There are so many factors. But of course, if you have anybody who is going to be in the uh, seat as what, a running mate, you should have certain qualities that will really allow people to what, follow her, people will support her, that will also make it attractive to people to follow. But that person alone cannot be the factor that influence voter choice. So all the analysis you see in the media are basically wrong, wrong analysis. I must be blunt about it, all right? For, yes, for me, if you look at Nana... Go ahead, though. If you look at Nana's, yes, uh, you know, inclusion in the tickets, uh, obviously, you are looking at somebody who is experienced. Uh, you are looking at somebody who is popular. You are talking about a game of numbers. So popularity counts a lot. Uh, her university work and the work as a, a politician in the ministry, which is Ministry of Education. Remember, in politics, the ministry will hold, will make you popular or not. And uh, once you are looking at Ghanaian society, almost every home, there is what? Education going on. So if there's a policy, the minister, uh, during her tenure, was able to put in place it's obviously her name become a family a household name and the rest of this add to the popularity you are looking for somebody who can step into the shoes of the president when the president is incapable of continuing his tenure. Um, you are looking at somebody with many constituencies look at this woman it comes from so many constituencies apart from her natural constituency of the um, central region specifically where she comes from in a particular constituency um, she also appeals to uh, people, the gender groups, academics, uh, women, uh, by and large, and the general society. Of course, uh, the MP, NDC as a party. So all these things are things that are going to uh, support her to be able to uh, add to the ticket and make the ticket meaningful. For, for many, uh, Professor Jane Nanopokwajiman's promise, because she actually emphasize that it's not a threat but it's a promise that the ndc will go after people who plundered the state uh so they face the full rigors of the law uh, it's quite refreshing but whether that will ever happen is what many uh, are questioning now do you ever do you believe that can ever happen considering how politicians cover up for each other all these things can be done if the leaders themselves decide that, look, we will make sure that there is accountability, there's probity. 
After all, this is not a threat. If you read our constitution, the preamble of it, I mean, part of it saying that we, the people of this country, believe in what accountability, that at each point in time, we will hold our leaders for their actions and inactions. That's it. And if you extend the conversation to the concept of good governance, accountability is a, a critical component of it, that public officers will be held to account for their stewardship of their office. So um, that is, is there for everybody. And in governance, anybody who leaves office, prepare, be prepared that you'll be called upon at any time to answer questions. And that's not a threat. It's part of the oils that grease the wheels of governance so that it doesn't bring it to what a halt. Uh, so I think that if NDC is serious about it, and it's not going to be just a mere talk, then we want to see them, if power is given to them, implementing this thing to the fullest. Otherwise, let them remember that in politics, what goes around comes around. If you promise this, you are given opportunity and you do otherwise. The next time you want your mandate to be renewed, I'm afraid you are not going to get that. Already, the flag bearer has indicated some sensitive sectors that she will directly have control over when the NDC or if the NDC wins power. I mean, including education ministry, uh, gender ministry, um, health, employment. Do you see her to have what it takes uh, for that kind of efficiency needed in these sectors? I don't know what Ghanaians expect of uh, a woman who has gone through the mill and has risen to this level. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. He has all the experience. In terms of knowledge, he has all that. People who have occupied this position previously, do they match up in terms of her pedigree, in terms of what, uh, you know, experience, the quality of person she is? No. Don't, don't forget I'll... that the academia is different from the real life issues. Yeah, what is different about, are you not managing human resources? Are you not managing? Remember that the university is a microcosm of what the country. All ethnic groups are there. All religious groups are there. All workers are there. When you are managing, you are managing both home and abroad. There are foreign students who, uh, who are there. You are managing resources. And I'm telling you, there's a big one. For you to be able, able to even go through the mail and get to that talk, it is not easy. I'm telling you. So uh, if you think that, or if somebody thinks that, oh, he has gone through the university and it's not enough, I'm afraid. That's a big one. Let them occupy just a position as a head of department. They will run away and leave their sandals behind. And I challenge people who are saying that, look, he's old, he's this and that, and that uh, he's not fit for purpose and all that. If those people have those individuals in their homes, I challenge them to bring them forward. And then, you know, mention their names to other parties to use them as running mate. Then we are in competition. Otherwise, they should keep their mouth shut. I'm not saying that this woman, you know, uh, there is nothing that can be said against it and all that. But the issue is that if you have anything, bring it out. That is the basis of it. Because my understanding is that we are making sure that we bring the women up to scratch. We develop them to become the best for society. So if you want to undermine them unnecessarily, people like that will stand up and then support them. All women, it doesn't matter the political divide you find yourself. And I challenge those people that whatever they have against any of any of our you know, running mates, including this woman, they should bring it forward. And that will enhance the conversation and make it better. But for me, she has the experience, he has the capacity, he has the wherewithal to be able to manage any office. Remember that the public office is not run by an individual alone. We use the bureaucrats to run the affairs of the state. So where she falls short in terms of what expertise, other public officials, the bureaucrats will support her to lift up her, her game. After all, if we've seen the leaders who have had, some are engineers, some are lawyers, they've been able to manage this office. How much more uh, somebody who has administered at the university level as uh, a CEO of the university and has held a position as a minister for education, that big portfolio, I can say without fear of contradiction that she'll be able to manage the affairs of the state. Well, if on, on, on that, on, on, the power. Undoubtedly, there are high expectations, actually, not because, uh, even though she's not the flag bearer, but also because she'll become the first woman vice president this country has produced, and if the NDC wins power, and also because there are a lot of people who have 
uh, said that she really doesn't have any magic uh, for the NDC to win power. I mean, what are your expectations of her? The woman is going to complete the uh, complement the effort of John Mahama, and of course, they will build on their party's what uh, works, their records, to be able to what, win support of the people. It is the duty of Ghanaians to assess them whether uh, it is a party worth considering uh, for this time around. And what once that decision is made by the general masses of the people, at the end of the day, uh, they will give them their vote and then they win the election. If that is not the case, Ghanaians will show which party is ready for their service. So it's just a matter of time. But we want quality people to show up and demonstrate knowledge that they understand our situation. They are ready to deal with our problems head on and they are going to govern us with all what honesty so that we know that we can entrust our political uh, power in their care. If we have people who can just come and then will promise heavens and then give us something that is not meaningful, we'll take political notice of that. And when opportunity avails itself the next time, we'll throw them out. It's a simple matter. I'm grateful for your time. Dr. Sasante, he is a senior political science lecturer with the University of Ghana Department of Political Science. He's also head of the Center for European Studies at the university. And election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity, Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, and German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental, Wellness, and Beauty. Thank you.